faithful people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we're going to uh, have uh, Pastor Charlie Fierro come and, and preach the word. Uh, he's he's uh, stayed here uh, in Silver City for the last week doing some work here. Uh, and uh, you know, when he's here, I'd like to take advantage of uh, his uh, preaching skills. Glory to God, the grace that God has given him to minister uh, the word of God. And so uh, we're grateful that he's here. Let's welcome him as he comes. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's been a tremendous time. There's been a lot of anointed preaching. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor Andrew says, man, we love, we're like preaching junkies. <laughs> and it's been a tremendous time. And hallelujah. Just powerful messages. Praise God. Some of them left me shaking. Praise God. And some of them left me with the eyes wide open. But uh, I said, Lord, what do you want me to preach after all this? Praise God. And, and uh, just being around Silver City, is, uh, it's amazing because uh, you go from person to person. And, and uh, it's amazing how you run into a lot of people and, and they're in unbelief. There's just a spirit of unbelief on a lot of people. And, and, uh, and you know, I, I, I witness to people and I talk to people and... <laughs> And everybody, you know, always talking about their illnesses and, and about the doctors they went. And, and said, what about Jesus? Amen. He said, amen. Hallelujah. And it's amazing how you run to so many people uh, that need the Lord Jesus Christ in this city. Praise God. Uh, my brother was uh, actually talking to one of his friends. And he says, man, and he says, my brother's amazing. He says, uh, uh, he goes, he's, he's, he's working like he's on meth. He's done so much work. But he doesn't understand that I've humbled myself to come to prayer every morning. Yes, and I says, Lord, strengthen me. Amen. Only you can do it. So overwhelmed with, uh, you know, what I have to do and, and what I've done already, praise God, and and, and I give God all the glory, hallelujah, praise God. And, and I do this constantly, even in Victoria. Every morning I am in prayer, faithfully. I drive off and I keep on praying for people. The Bible says that, you know, men always ought to pray and not lose heart, yeah. praise God. And uh, I can say through my own convictions, I'm in constant prayer because there's so much unbelief. Can somebody say amen? So I'm going to preach a message, prayer against unbelief. Follow with me, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 16. Prayer against unbelief. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 16. Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before his eyes. Is today not the wheat harvest and I will call to the Lord and he will send thunder and rain that you may perceive and see your wickedness is great which you have done in the sight of the Lord in asking a king for yourselves so Samuel called to the Lord and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel and all the people said to Samuel pray for your servants to the Lord your God that we may not die for we have added to our sins the evil of asking a king for ourselves. Then Samuel said to the people, Do not fear. You have done this wickedness, yet...
Do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside, for then you would go after empty things, which cannot profit or deliver, for they are nothing. For the Lord will not forsake His people, for His name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you His people. Moreover, as for me, far it be from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Can somebody say amen? amen. Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth in all your heart, for consider the great things which He has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. Let's stop right there and let's pray. Father, I thank you. I give you all the glory. I pray, Father, this evening that you would touch each and one of us, Father. Father, meet our needs. Father, help us, Father, to stay in tune with you. We give you all the glory and all the praise, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. And all the gospel people said, Amen. Amen. I picked up a, a little article from Franklin Graham. Let me read it to you. My prayer is for healing that Jesus Christ, God's Son, as a nation, we would turn our eyes back on Him. And you know, 150 years ago, you pastors in the churches were the political leaders in every community, Graham told. Recalling nationwide protests during the Vietnam War, Graham believes that the nation is even more divided today. We need a spiritual healing. This country and only God can do we're coming today for all the states to pray, to humble ourselves, to confess the sins of our nation to God and to ask for his forgiveness and to call upon him to help our nation. And we're going to pray for our representatives, Republican, Democrat. We're going to pray for all of them amen. like that. Can you say amen? amen? So think about it, church. We're living in a time that first thing I want to cover this evening is the essence of prayer. What is it, church, that you would always see the word of God and it is drama? Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. And you see that you see a lot of people always walking into unbelief. And there's so much dramatic situations in a lot of families. Can you say amen? And this is why today, let me tell you something. The only thing that's going to comfort your heart and stay in tune and have a faith for people with unbelief. If you stay steady praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So think about it. We're living in a time, church. God will call us in these times. This is a book of drama. You see so much dramatic situations. Can you say amen? People wanting to do their own thing. Ay, ay, ay. God help us. Can you say amen? <laughs> the Bible says in our text, here's the gods. Here's God's people that have stepped into time. Of unbelief in a dramatic situations. Unbelief will always open the doors to dramatic situations. Can somebody say amen? amen? And we're living in a time, let me tell you something. There's a lot of things interfering the things of God. False gods. False beliefs. Witchcraft. And this is why today, oh glory to God, that we can stand up and rise up and start believing in prayer. Bible says in Acts 19, verse 24, and a certain man named Etrepius, silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, brought to small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together, the workers of similar occupation, and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see here, not only as emphasis, but throughout almost in Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned the way many people saying they are not gods and they are made with hands. So not only is this trade ours in danger of falling into dispute, but also in the temple of the great goddess Diana, may it also be despised and magnified and destroyed, whom of all Asia in the world of worship. Now when they heard this, they were all full of wrath, cried out saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater and went accord in having seized Gaius. And the Bible talks of him, Paul traveled with his companions. Can you say right there is just a, just a movement of people believing on godly things, of people that would have unbelief? Come on, hallelujah, praise God. I was around my, my cousin uh, Danny today and and I told him something profound, and, and uh, I, says, I says, Danny, I says, it doesn't matter what president we got up there. 
What matters is what's been written in the Bible. What's going to happen. What's going to come upon us. Let me tell you something. There's something about it, man. When you and I, we, we, we go through life and you and I, oh, glory to God, and we can make decisions with the Holy Ghost. See, the greatest sin is unbelief. Yeah. Come on. We're going somewhere. Have you ever met somebody that is always into the drama? Ay, ay, ay. Almost sounds like the old novelas. People looking at novelas and always yelling and screaming at each other and making a big old drama scene. You know, I, I ran into some of that even here in Silver City. <laughs> what is it that you know that we got to give people hope Amen. of the blood of Jesus? Praise God. We got to even take it into prayer and say, Lord, Lord, let them meet Jesus the way I met Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost come down when I got saved. Let me try this out. It was dramatic, Holy Ghost. Amen. See, the Bible says up to this point, Samuel was Israel's judge. He led the people according to God's plan. The Bible says they were asking for a king for themselves. Didn't want to obey God's word through the mouth of Samuel. See, the Bible says that Samuel made prayer for his people. Hallelujah. When's the last time you really got upset over a situation and you try to deal with it with your own flesh and without prayer? Right, ay, ay, ay. Think about it, church. Are you in that place in life where you say, man, glory to God, I'm going to pray. I'm going to humble myself. Lord, I need your strength. Lord, I need your guidance. Lord, I need the Holy Ghost to bring things to remembrance. And think about it, church. We're living in a time that we need to tap into Holy Ghost connection. Are you in that kind of prayer? Bible says in Acts chapter 2, they were all one accord in one place, and suddenly they came with the sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Here's a powerful truth. Human beings activating the power of heaven. You know, it's so awesome when we can come together as a church. We just got to have two believers, you see, or three. Amen. When there's two or more gathered in mind, there I am in the midst of them. So many times I want to I, I find ooh, the saved, the born again, hallelujah. Let's believe together. Come on. Amen. Many years ago, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, there's an old man coming to our church, Fidel Barrera. This man had a faith. This man loved prayer. He walks up to the pulpit and he says, Pastor Charlie, he says, I need a truck. Okay. He said, but I only got $10. I looked at him and I says, okay, I will agree with you. Pastor, you know that God can give me a truck. Yes, I know it. We pray together in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come together with agreement. We pray for Mr. Barrera that you would bless him with a truck. A week after that, you know, he was mowing his lawn and this guy stops by. And he says, God tell me to give you my Chevy truck. Wow. So next service, he drives up in a Chevy truck. <laughs> and then he tells me, I had $10 and I tried to offer it to him, but, uh, but he didn't want it. He says, use it so you can change the papers. <laughs> can you say we're living in a time where we need that pure faith? Yes. What happens when we come in prayer? What happens when you and I, we come and get a hold of God on bended knee? Let me tell you, things begin to happen. What happens when we really open up to God? Can God tell you your mistakes? Amen. Come on, we're going somewhere. How many know there's barriers to prayer? The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. So then it was my wish that men should pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands with no anger in their heart, no doubt in their minds. The Bible talks about partly here, think about it, there's so many barriers. And this is why today you and I would always say, Lord, oh, convict me of my sin. Convict me of my anger. Convict me of crazy things that come into my mind. I need to pray. I need to believe. See, a lot of people do not want to come to prayer because they're afraid what God's going to tell them. Ay, 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 come on. Amen. Many times God spoke to me, many, many times, you better do this. I said, okay. Can God speak to you in the times like this? 
Bible says he who prays must have no anger in his heart. Human nature. Think about it, church, that you and I would walk through life, man, just forgiving people. What is it that you and I, man, we can forgive one person and the next second, there's another one. We have to forgive. Amen. Am I the only one? <laughs> Think about it. Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 15, if you forgive men of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not, neither will your Father forgive you. Jesus stresses the fact that we cannot hope to receive forgiveness of God if we don't forgive our fellow man. Amen. Praise God. I was preaching a message in, in our congregation. And I was actually voicing out some things. I says, man, daily, I have to forgive people even in this church. Amen. And the reason that I can look at you in the eyes is because I made my heart right with Oh, you can hear a pain drop. Bing. Come on. Amen. Are you in that place in life where you just got to understand that the greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? Are you in that place in life where do you value what God would do in our lives? So the powerful truth, human beings can activate the power of heaven. The Bible says in Colossians 1.29, to this end, I will labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Hallelujah. Like I said, man, I've been running all kinds of people and just unbelief. You're not believing nothing? Doom? Pains? Do you know God says he would take our pains? Amen. Why don't you give him your pains? Amen. He hung it on the cross. Let me tell you something. We're, we're getting older. There's some pains coming. I give them all to Jesus. I'll take this baby. <laughs> Come on. Think about it. Bible talks about it. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think accordingly to his power that works through us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you in this realm believing God? Do you open up the scripture in prayer time and says, Oh God, you can do even more what I ask? Yeah. Are you in that place in life where you say, Man, the words are living? Yeah. Come on. My brother telling Richard Grado, Man, Charlie's working like he's on crack. He doesn't know that I come and just say, Lord, give me strength. Help me to help my family in this situation. Later, I can say, wow, I don't give myself the credit. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. The Bible talks about it in verse 23 of our very text. Moreover, as for me, for it be for me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. How many, how many desire the right way? Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. And this is why, let me tell you something, you know, God is trying to show us the right way. Right now, I'm just, you're just families that are devastated because of unbelief and rebellion. It's amazing how, you know, you know I, I can reverse back into many days and I says, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And they did it. And time has done a number on folks that... Do not obey God. What is it that pastors always have to pick up the, the pieces? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. What happens when people don't pray? People continue normally to hate, to partake in vengeance, in unbelief, in pride, in laziness, doing things on their own without involving God. Are you in the place in life where you just got to involve God in every moment? Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you in the place in life where you say, man, Lord, I want to stay always praying. The Bible says in Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. Are you that kind of person? I don't know about you, but let me tell you, I, 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 I'm going on 40 years being saved and and it is so valuable and always communicating with God. 
Praise God. And my wife. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. See, prayer has the power to change. Can somebody say amen? Yes. Bible says in Luke 22, verse 32, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Hallelujah. I had a, one brother that had that has come back to the Lord, praise God. And, and I've been praying for this brother for the longest time, you know, for this, this COVID time. And all of a sudden, all kinds of people disappear. And it bothered me. Okay, I'm going to go down the line. I'm going to pray for him, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. And I did not stop. He texts me one day and he says, Pastor, I'm coming back to serve God. I got it. Amen. Oh, Amen. did you know it's so awesome when people get it? Yes. But you look back and everything, they were like, really? But they got it. Amen. Come on. The Holy Ghost that spoke to me and said, man, it's because you haven't stopped praying for them. Amen. Second, let's talk about words of prayer trigger miracles. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Bible says in our very text, verse 18, and Samuel called to the Lord and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. What is it that God does back up our words? What is it that there God still wants to do miracles, signs, and wonders? The Bible says, for the prayer of a righteous man prevailed much. Praise God. Are you striving to just be right with God? Let me tell you, as you pray. I was hearing the sermon, you know, uh, from Pastor Ray. And Pastor Ray said he likes to read the Bible out loud. I like to pray out loud. Amen. Something about words. Oh, glory to God. Lord, save them. Lord, heal them. Lord, help them. God, deliver them in the name of Jesus. And words go on. Let me tell you something, church. It's so awesome because many, many times I've been praying, just, Lord, let them get it. They walk in church all convicted. I haven't seen you for a while, brother, sister. But you've been praying for them. Bible says, Mark 11, verse 74, let no one eat from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Uh, I got rebuked by Pastor Mitchell uh, several years ago before he went to be with Jesus, uh, right after Harvey. And uh, in Harvey time, there's this big, big tree that I hate it because it gave me the creeps. Because there are always, you know, stories about a tree falling on a house and killing people. This, this tree's big. Harvey's coming. We have to evacuate. So speedily I went and I laid hands on this big tree. Tree, you're going to go down in the name of Jesus when Harvey comes. And I want you to go that way. In Jesus' name. Got in the truck and we split what happens? Harvey came. It's the only tree went down. So we're at like pastor's the dinner there in San Antonio with Pastor Mitchell. And I'm, I'm sharing with the guys and I'm telling them, man, I command this tree to go down. I didn't like it. It went down. Pastor Mitchell locks eyes with me. He says, you should have laid your hand and told the tree to keep on standing. And I go, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Can you imagine all the words of prayer that you would line up with God to be God's will that will happen? Can you imagine every time you come in prayer saying, Lord, it is your will to save. It is your will to, to deliver people. It is your will to bring brand new minds. It is your will that marriage will be strong. And you speak these words and they become miracles. Are you in that place? In life. Bible talks about. Moses cried out to the Lord saying. 
Please heal her, O oh God, I pray. And Marion was healed. Now listen to me, because the Bible records that, you know, Marion and Aaron actually rebelled against Moses. Think about this. And the Bible says, you know, they rebelled because he married this other woman. But they got cursed for it. She got leprosy. So here again, you know, the cloud comes down and, and, and now she's got leprosy. But the heart of Moses says, heal, heal her. Can God feel that kind of heart? Have you, ever seen, have, have you ever prayed for somebody that's rebelled out against the church? Against the congregation of God? Against your own testimony? Have you crossed that barrier and say, man, I'm going to pray for them? Let me tell you something. It is so awesome, church, that you would understand this because we're living in a time that God wants to help us because words of prayer trigger miracles. Bible says in Numbers 20 and verse 8, Take the rod and you and your brother Aaron gather the congregation together and speak to the rock before their eyes. And it will yield its water and you shall bring water for the out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and to their animals. Do you speak words of prayer? Oh God, bring a miracle. I need, I, I need, I need a miracle for this situation. Lord, show me your will. Show me your purpose. Do you pour out your heart into personal things? The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Verse 6, Be Behold, I will bring it health and healing and heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and Truth. Oh, glory to God. Let us understand that, church. Let us understand that you and I must understand that when we call upon the name of Jesus, Lord, we got to believe it and seal it. Can you say amen? amen? Lastly, let's talk about activating the power of God. The Bible says in verse 18 and 19 of our very text, and Samuel called to the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And the people said to Samuel, Pray for your servants to the Lord your God, that we might not die. For we, for we have added to our sins and the evil of asking a king for ourselves. You know, prayer is so awesome, church, because God can reveal our sin all the time. All the time. It's these personal moments that we have with God. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about in Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. Speak your word only and my servant will be healed. Praise God. Amen. So here's the reality. The strength of believers comes working together, believing together. Hallelujah. Bible says where there's two or more gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. And we must believe God continually. Hallelujah. Bible says in Leviticus 26 verse 8. Five of you shall chase a, a hundred and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. Have you ever just done a personal survey and just get around people that are believing God? Hey, brother, let's pray for the same thing this morning. And you find somebody. You, you, have you ever seen the curious believers in the church? They just want to believe anything? Find those. Come on. Pray with me. Kind of like... Mr. Barrera, let me tell you another thing Mr. Barrera did many years ago. i never forget this. This man had wisdom. Went up to be with Jesus. But he taught me a lot of things. Come up to me one day, and he tells me, Pastor Charlie, you know that bar over there in Rio Grande? After service, I want you, you and me are going to go curse it. Oh. What? Never done that before. <laughs> Why do you want to curse it, Mr. Barrera? My son goes there. He always wants to go to that bar. He always gets drunk. He always problems in the family. Will you go with me to curse it? To tell you the truth, I was uh, very uneasy. 
Are you even thinking about it? Okay, Mr. Barrera. Listen to me very closely. We got there. It's a wild scene. The bikers, the huchimamas, the crazy people, the dope smokers, people drinking. Wild scene. And I says, well, what do you want to do? Uh, uh, I'll pay right here. No, no, we're going to curse the front door. <laughs> Me and the little old man. <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> he says, you grab one doorpost, I'll grab the other one. And people are looking at strange. Holy Ghost came down. In the name of Jesus, we curse this place to be shut down. People looking at us all weird. <laughs> to this day, that place is still shut down. Yeah. This came through an agreement of two believers. It's amazing. Can you find a believer to agree on some things? Or can we just, oh, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know. Oh, we're just gonna live this thing for the rest of our lives. I don't know. I'm gonna be poor all my life. <laughs> really? <laughs> Me and my wife, always, we always talk to you and we say, when God blesses us, when we're rich, we're going to get that. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we say, amen, amen. Can you agree on that? Amen. Do you find yourselves in prayer? In the hold of God? Our call is to rally God's people together. Amen. Come on. Amen. Bible says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 19. For I know that I will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11. You also help helping together in prayer for us that thanks may be given by many persons in our behalf for the gift granted to us through many. Oh, can you get people to agree in prayer? It's amazing. So many times I've come to prayer right before service, and they're talking, all the, uh, and, and, and uh, everybody's looking on the phone. Everybody wants revival, but everybody's somewhere else. I'm praying. People are laughing over in the corner. <laughs> it's amazing. Got to get people to pray with us. I start praying loud when I hear this, these things in, in our church. I hear people that don't want to pray. In the name of Jesus, I pray. God, give us revival. And I, my volume starts going up. Pretty soon they start walking in to prayer room. Will you be that kind of person? Do you have to be to prayer and pray for some needs? Romans 15, verse 30. Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. Are you striving, brother and sister? Think about it. Been around my, my uh, old buddies here in Silver City and... and uh, Run into one of them and he says, Charlie, how many years haven't you drank alcohol? This is 39 plus. Wow, he says. He says, it's just been seven minutes ago that I drank alcohol. I says, it don't have to be that way. It don't have to be that way. I want what you have. I says, well, come to the kingdom of God. Come to the blood of Jesus. Come to the one that can set you free. It's not religion. Come on. Then he starts telling his girlfriend, he's trying to keep me to his church. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Lastly, in closing, turn with me, church. 
Acts 12. Verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church when Herod was about to bring him out. The night Peter was sleeping bound to chains between two shoulders, the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and the light shone on the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and rose him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird yourselves and tie your sandals. And he said, So he did. And he said to him, Put on your garments and follow me. And he went out and followed them, not knowing what he had done by the angel was real, but thought that he is seeing a vision. When he was past the first and second guard post, they came to the iron gate, lead them to the city, which opened to them on accord. And they went out and went down to the street. Immediately, the angel departed from him. Constant prayer was made. Three powerful things happen here. Light shines, and it brings the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. What is it when uh, you're just in praying, man, just, oh, glory to God, and, and you feel the presence of God, like, like in the morning's here, and the morning's before a, a, a service, praise God, that you can feel the presence of God in this place. Amen. Come on. Secondly, the chains fell off and breaks the, the chains of the devil. Amen. Many deliverances come by prayer. God, to take this away, Lord. This is ugly. It's controlling me. Many of my deliverances came through prayer. I didn't wait for the evangelist. It came through prayer. Lord, take this ugly thing away from me. Come on. Amen. Thirdly, iron gates open and the enemy loses its dominion. And somebody say amen. amen. Listen to me very carefully. My son has cameras in his, in his house in Corpus Christi. And he showed me something that I, ay, ay, just vexed me. He says, check it out, Dad. Looking at the crime camera, it's like a spirit going in front of his house. Has arms, has a head, but it has like no legs in its flow. Caught it on camera. Principalities and powers can be broken through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Come on. Amen. There's hosts of wickedness that are hanging around. When I saw that, it's just like, ay, ay, ay. Dad, this is real. There's spirits. Prayer gives you dominion through the blood of Jesus to protect your family, your household, your marriage. There's something about pleading the blood of Jesus in prayer. Let's bow our heads. Let's give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Prayer against unbelief. So awesome, church, that you and I would come and just say, oh, glory to God, God's word is alive. The Bible says in our very text, Know therefore and stand and see the great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Oh, glory to God. Can you believe that way, brother and sister, this evening? You're on live stream. Oh, can you believe this? When you go to prayer, are you just saying, Lord, you can do all things in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Verse 21, the Bible says, you would go after, you would not go after empty things, which cannot profit or deliver you, for these are nothing. Bible is talking partly here that you and I would connect to the prayers. Hallelujah, praise God. A 
America desperately needs prayer. Families desperately need prayer. My friends here in this city desperately need prayer. Back in Victoria, hallelujah, praise God. It is a sweet evening when I go to sleep. <coughs> because I cover my ground, I do the work of the Lord, and I believe God, hallelujah. First of all, this evening, perhaps by some chance, you're here in this congregation, you're on live stream. Perhaps by some chance you don't have Jesus, you're not saved, you're not born again. Or perhaps you're backslidden. But you want to pray this prayer. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand this evening. Anybody not right with God, lift up your hand here in this congregation. Maybe you're live stream. Pray with me the prayer of salvation that saves our soul. Lord Jesus, forgive us for all our sins. I turn from my sins to you, Lord. I know you died for us and rose up the third day that we can be saved. Come into my heart and forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me for unbelief, for doubting you. From this day on, I'm going to believe you. Come into my heart and I thank you for forgiving my sins. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to stand and we're going to give God all the glory. Amen. I'm going to open time of altar. If you want to come this, this evening, praise God. Let's, we're going to sing that song. Hallelujah. We thank you, Manula Labasidia. I give you the praises, Manula calling each and one of us, Father, yes, even now. Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. That's all I got.